My name is Michael Kraus, and you're listening to Pro Lacrosse Talk. On Shriver. Snyder with scores! Now it's Mike yeah. Pinnell scores! Hands off for Ravel, switches hands and scores! Kylie Elmo are showing off those shifty skills. Right off the bat, there's Lyle Thompson! Shoots and scores! Michael Kraus! When you put a short stick on Michael Kraus, he is going to get to the rack, and he casts home. Welcome to Season 2 of the Pro Lacrosse Talk Podcast, the voice of Pro Lacrosse. I'm Hutton, he's Adam, and together we're bringing you interviews from all your favorite players and coaches, as well as news and analysis from all four professional lacrosse leagues. We're here with Michael Krause, 2019 NCAA National Champion with Virginia, and newest member of the Connecticut Hammerheads. Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. We're glad to have you. You know, you're fresh off getting drafted uh, and signing a contract with the Hammerheads. We're going to talk about that a little bit, but before we do, we kind of want to discuss growing up in New Canaan, Connecticut. Um, You come from a lacrosse family, so tell us when did you first pick up a stick and get into the sport of lacrosse? I probably started playing around like second grade, but I'm sure I had the stick in my hand even before that. (laughs) Uh, My two older brothers both played lacrosse, and I was always, you know, hanging on their coattails, always trying to do exactly what they were doing, and they loved lacrosse as well. So, you know, when they were, um, you know, playing youth lacrosse, I would always be on the sidelines trying to play. Um, But so as early as I can remember, I was playing lacrosse. That's awesome. And I'm sure uh, your dad, Steve, and your uncle might have had uh, a hand in you playing as well. They both are Virginia alums. Talk about your decision uh, to kind of follow in their footsteps and head uh, to Charlottesville and what other schools – did you visit on, on your recruiting trek? Having my uncle and my dad both play at UVA um, and then, then being able to play at UVA was a dream come true of mine. Um, you know, I think I was always wearing the Virginia Sabre uh, growing up and it was definitely, you know, a dream of mine to be able to play there. I mean, it was, I was willing to do anything I could to get there and it was really my, my dream school. Um and I'm just so happy and fortunate that I, was, that I was able to end up there. Through the recruiting process, it really came down to uh, UVA and Cornell. Those I really enjoyed both places. And then, it, you know, I was fortunate enough to get a phone call from Don Starja and visit there and end up getting a, uh, you know, offered by them. And it, it was an easy decision for me. Um, I did have to PG. Uh, so I took a post-grad year mm-hmm. after New Canaan High School and uh, went up to Taft up in Connecticut. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do right mm-hmm. out of school, but it was, looking back on it, it was the best thing that I ever could have done for myself in my lacrosse game. So I was, you know, at first I was not so happy about taking the year, but sure. then as soon as I got there, had some friends, had a lot of fun playing lacrosse there and, you know, getting better in, in all aspects. And then being able to get to UVA, it was, you know, kind of the perfect transition for me. That's awesome. Uh, you were, you talked about wearing uh, the shield a little bit. Did, have you seen the, the update to the logo? What do you think of that? Yeah, I, I like how, what they did with the, the V-Saber and make it, you know, a little bit more 3D. I'm still warming up to the, the new ones, but I think they're cool. Sure. I think it appeals to some younger guys, the younger kids and, yeah. And that aspect, and just add a little bit of flair to the to the old old school V saber. I, I have to say too, I, I love how you guys have the V saber on your helmets, like on the front. I think that is by far like the coolest use of a logo in a helmet, probably. Other than, I mean, there, I mean, there's some good ones, but that, that to me, I think is, um, you know, when Warrior did that with your guys' helmets, I thought it was really really cool. Yeah, it was. I, I, th- I love the the V saber going like through the helmet it was just adds a perfect touch to it yeah it's it's awesome um let's talk a little bit more though about you know playing at uva uh you know you were recruited by Dom, Dom Starja. um lars tiffany would take over during your career there and uh you ended up winning a you know championship in 2019 talk to you know that journey though from your freshman year um to winning it your junior year yeah no it was a, a really great experience to be you know to build a relationship with with coach Starja and coach man you know, two legendary lacrosse coaches, um, you know, very unfortunate. I wasn't able to play for them, um, you know, going into that freshman year and that summer, there was some uncertainty with what was going to happen. Um, I was still perfect, you know, perfectly set on UVA because I loved the school and, and the, you know, the academics and Charlottesville itself. So I was never wavering on that aspect. 
um, but was some uh, uncertainty of, of the coach and who was going to be, obviously. Um, and as soon as I heard that it was going to be Coach Tiffany and Coach Kerwin and Coach Turner, I was pretty excited. You know, obviously I had watched their Final Four run at Brown and just seen their mm-hmm. offense play. And I think it, you know, it was perfect for me, honestly. And, you know, their offensive style and how I play of being able to go to the goal, um, you know, not afraid to make mistakes, really putting trust in the players. Is I think you know having that run and gun style as well. I think that's you know how the game should be played. It's, it was the most fun. Um, I remember after the first game at Loyola, I, th- I think we won by one or two, um, and it was up and down. There was a ton of fans, and, and it was just it was the most fun I had in a lacrosse game in a while. Um, and, and at that level, to be able to see that it's you know not crazy X and O's that's what are going to win you the game. It's you know, executing when you have opportunities come about and, you know, just being able to run up and down the field and then fly around is, and flow with your teammates is, is what it all comes down to. So, um, you know, that transition from that uncertainty of where the, who the coach was going to be to kind of that joy and happiness of hearing who the coaching staff was going to be and, and how their offense and, you know, just team schemes run were, were perfect for me going into my first year. And, you know, that culminated last year with the national championship. Uh, talk about that experience, making that run with the Who's and winning it all. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it was the best experience. You know, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but kind of as soon as we got to UVA, my, my class, um, you know, we had always – we felt that we were really strong. We had a ton of talent, uh, you know, a lot of physical abilities. We, um and as soon as we got there, we kind of felt like we could change something, that we could, you know, really be the start of something and, and bring UVA back. Um, and it was just really cool to be a part of that and be a you know, part of that class that can, you know, say, you you know, we won a championship with UVA and, and brought that excellence back. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, more to that year, um, I think a lot of people didn't expect that to happen. I think we got a lot of balls go our way and, yeah. and calls and things like that. But I think we had put in so much effort and time and sacrifice during the fall and into the spring that I think, you know, those were destined to go our way almost. And uh, sure. it was just an amazing run. And, and I've never been a part of a better team chemistry-wise, connected, um, just trusting each other on the field. And I think that was the biggest um, – reason why we were able to succeed in those late games, you know, over time when we were down four or five goals in the fourth quarter, it's just, you know, looking at one another and saying, all right, I got this. You can trust me. I can trust you. And, and you can saw that unfold in, in all the game, close games that we won and, and then down the stretch. I think your resiliency it was, it was definitely evident. You guys just never quit. Like you mentioned, you, you went down, but you, you guys were never out of it. And you, you proved that and winning it all. Um, and I, I think it was, you know, a tremendous season for you guys. Um, but let's talk about it in contrast, you know, how disappointing was it, you know, in this 2020 season getting cut short because of COVID-19? Um, talk us through the emotions when you found out about the news of your season being canceled. I think a lot of us were just at a loss for words of what was happening. Um, we were coach, and, and I think everyone else was pretty confident that we were still going to be able to play, and we were kind of holding on to that last thing of hope. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as, you know, this was all unfolding in the beginning stages and, you know, m- maybe we were going to go online for classes, but somehow we were going to still play lacrosse and we mm-hmm. were, hope, you know, holding on to that, um, that last bit of hope. Um, and then I remember that, you know, it was, I think it was Thursday night and, you know, we were all out and we got word that the NBA was canceling the season. Um, but, NCA hadn't called anything yet, so we were still holding on. Um, then we went out to Friday practice. Um, nothing had been called, so we were all still excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coach Tiffany came in a lot for him, and, you know, usually we go through the practice plan, and, and mm-hmm. it's pretty structured. And, you know, he was like, all right, just everyone get outside. Let's let's get one more one more chance out on the field. And we just had an inner squad finish, and it was just – Everyone was flying around, you know, flying around, smiles on their faces, and just having a ton of fun. And it was pretty intense, pretty fast-paced, like we always wanted to play. And it was just a really cool opportunity to, you know, 
enjoy it one last time uh, before we got back in the locker room. We heard that it would would be canceled. Um, And I think at that point, everyone, you know, we were just at a loss for words and the emotions of what was going to happen. Obviously devastating. Um, And I don't think it hit until a couple of weeks after when I was sitting at home and I was like looking at, you know, a stick in the corner of the room and being, wow, you know, I'm not going back out there with my teammates who I've been, you know, grinding with for the past four years. Yeah. Not going to have that, you know, last hurrah of a season. Um, so, so it stung for a while, but I think just looking at the bright side of things and then seeing that it could be a lot worse um, is, is the way that I think a lot of, you know, a lot of us have been able to get through it and just focus on the positives and also just look back and, and you know, say what a amazing run and wild ride it has been and just be grateful for that and, and not worry so much about the time that we didn't have this year. Yeah, no, I think that's a great outlook on it. Um, and I guess talk to us a little bit, too, about your decision. You know, you, you guys get an extra year of eligibility. You decide to forego that and go pro. Um, why didn't it make sense for you to go pro? You know, everyone's decisions are different and everyone has different factors. So what kind of influenced your decision? Yeah, I think um, there there were a lot of things that went into it, obviously, but I think I was ready to move on. I had, you know, I couldn't have dreamed of having the success individually or as a team that we did uh, for the, in the previous three years. You know, we'd won a championship, got a ton of accolades, and was, you know, had the success that I could have ever dreamed of having. Um, but, you know, I would, you know, kind of just, you know, I talked with a ton of, you know, alumni, um, guys that had done 50 years, other coaches, and, and just to try and get the full perspective on what people, you know, were thinking about the perspective of having a fifth year. Um, but it ultimately came down to personal decision and, and trusting, you know, my gut and how I would have felt going back to school. Um, and I was just, I think, ready to move on. I, I have a job lined up in New York. Um, you know, I had, you know, all the success I could have ever asked for. And, and uh, it was essentially, I was ready to ready to move on from college mm-hmm. and, and test my ability to continue to keep playing at the pro level. Um, and so th- those were kind of where my decision came down to and, sure. and why I was able to make the decision. It was, it was really tough. Um, but I, you know, I'm happy with what decision I made, and and it was kind of how I was feeling from the start of when this was all unfolding throughout mm-hmm. it, and I, you know, didn't really waver from that, so I knew that that was the right decision for me, um, and I'm, you know, still happy that I that I made that decision. Yeah, that's great, and you know, uh, you're you're gonna be moving on to the pros, like you said, and you were high draft picks in both the MLL and PLL draft. You decided to sign a two-year deal with your hometown squad and the Connecticut Hammerheads. Uh, talk to us about that decision. What excites you to play pro lacrosse in Connecticut? Yeah, I'm extremely excited for the opportunity. I think to be able to play at the next level in Connecticut, where it's basically in my hometown, um, is just an unreal opportunity for me. Um, you know, I'm really excited for the you know for the MLL and the opportunity they've given me and. Then, um, Really, you know, I think that I can kind of spearhead the whole Connecticut region sure. um, and really gain some more fans and exposure. Not that they really need it because Fairfield County and the surrounding Connecticut areas are uh, you know, pretty involved in the cross. But I think it's just a, an awesome opportunity that um, combined with some other personal factors, sure. um, it was just something I couldn't pat up on, and, and uh, I'm extremely excited for it. No, that's great. And uh, talk to us a little bit about some discussions you've had with Coach Bill Warder, you know, leading up to maybe the draft or following the draft and then op- ultimately signing with the Hammerheads. Uh, how has he reached out to you and kind of talked about this upcoming season and have any players reached out to you as well? Yeah, Coach Warder's been awesome throughout this whole thing. Um, you know, kind of tried to balance being drafted in both leagues and not wanting to, you know, keep keep my options open basically, but, but coach Warder has been awesome. I've had a bunch of phone calls with him, um, you know, him talking about, you know, how he likes to play, um, which was, is pretty similar to how coach Kerwin and coach uh, Tiffany like to play. And it's mm-hmm. really run and gun, get to the goal um, and, and, you know, beat the other team with goals. And that was something that I was looking for 
um, you know, to kind of have not not a laid back style, but more of just uh, mistake free and, and be able to take advantage of opportunities when they're there and not have to second guess it. Um, so really excited for the you know how Coach Warder coaches and, and how he likes to play. Um, but he's just kept me you know up to date with how the Hammerheads are going to be um, coming off last season, winning the majority of their last games and, and really looking good. Um, and, and going into this summer, you know, they, the Hammerhead, you know, we look really, you know, our uh, the squad looks really good and, and, you know, have high hopes of us being there for championship weekend. Um, but he's been awesome and really transparent and, and helpful throughout the whole process. That's great. You know, I think, like, like you said, uh, the Hammerhead, when they were in Dallas last year, really came on strong at the end of the last season. So, adding someone like you will definitely be a positive. But kind of mm-hmm. speaking of, of adding you to the squad and, and preparing for the season, uh, how are you currently training uh, to get ready uh, for a summer of lacrosse? Yeah, I think uh, it's it's a little harder without, you know, gyms being open and, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, having access to all that equipment. But, you know, just keeping the stick in my hands as much as I can, Get going out for long runs, trying to stay in shape conditioning-wise, and then, you know, coming up with creative ways with for you know weights and you know, yeah. trying to keep strength up, but you know, a ton of push ups, you know, basically the jailhouse workout yep. of <laughs> just a ton of push ups, pull ups, sit ups, things like that. But, you know, honestly with all this I have way more time than before and you know uh, I can just focus on, you know, stick skills and just finding a wall somewhere. Yeah. Uh finding a net net in the backyard and just getting, you know, a ton of touches and, and just keeping the stick in my hands and, and staying in shape. So finding creative ways to do that. And, uh, yeah. and it's been fun. No, that's great. We're looking forward to, you know, seeing you suit up in a Connecticut Hammerheads uniform. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here, a word from our sponsor, and then we'll go into our five and five segment. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast. Today I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Anchor. We've been using Anchor for the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast since the very start. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place, and better yet, it's free. They allow you to easily record and edit your podcast, and once it's published, they send it out to all the major networks such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and many more. They also connect you with advertisers so you can start making money from your podcast right away. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast today, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Today I also want to talk to you about our affiliate Parkside Cards. Parkside Cards is your go-to source for Major League Lacrosse trading cards. They have a variety of packs on their website, including a box set that comes with four tickets to an MLL game, a Lyle Thompson signature pack that comes with a limited edition signed Lyle Thompson card. The best part is we've teamed up with Parkside Cards to provide you with a special discount. Simply visit parksidecards.com and use the code PLT to save 20% on your order today. All right, so welcome back. Now it's time to do our 5 and 5 segment. So Michael, I'll start off with the lacrosse questions. And the first one I have for you is, who was your favorite lacrosse player to watch while you were growing up? Uh, I would have to say uh, either Steel Stanwick or Johnny Christmas growing up. I loved, obviously, two UVA guys, attackmen. Just loved, you know, watching their smooth and slickness behind that axe and, and really reading the field. And those are two guys that I looked up to growing up and, and tried to be like. That's awesome. Yeah, I so I, uh, I'm from Philly, so I'm a big wing guy and, and barrage back in the day. And Johnny Christmas was on uh, the Philly wings. And, uh, when I tried out for Duke's club team, he was one of the coaches, and I was a goalie, and he was the first person to warm me up, and I was, like, awestruck the entire time. Yeah, I was going to say, did you make any saves at all? I mean, you were probably so nervous. He probably was nice about it and let me get a couple. That's great. And then uh, number two, what has been your toughest matchup during your playing career? Like, who's a player that you battled against? Maybe it's an ACC guy. Yeah, I think uh, what first comes to mind is uh, JT Giles Harris down at Duke. He's... A tremendous athlete, really great footwork. Um, you know, any type of move you try and put on him, he's able to recover no matter what. And, and um, you know, he's he's a really good on ball defender. So I think he's been the, one of the toughest matchups. Um, but there's been a lot of guys out there, and, and it's just trying to find some little advantage. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm the fastest or quickest guy, uh, but I think trying to use just small points of leverage on defenders and once they make a small mistake trying to get by them is, you know, kind of how I attack them. So he's probably one of the toughest and then first come to mind. 
Awesome. Yeah, no, you really embraced the physicality, which I, I know Coach Warder talked about a little bit, you know, what he liked about your your game. Um, going off of that, number three, who is your favorite lacrosse personality right now on social media? So this is more of a fun one. Like, who's a guy that's a lacrosse player that's on social media? Or it doesn't even have to be a player. It could be, you know, it's a personality like Diggs Tape that kind of uh, you kind of have fun watching. I like, like, the classic Kark and Quint. They're pretty funny on the, mm-hmm. you know, any broadcast or – out on Twitter, um, here and there, kind of inside jokes and their takes on what's going on is pretty funny. And then, like you said, I think Dig Tape is hilarious. Uh, just the, you know, his commentary on some of the jukes and tapes or shots is is is, is so funny on Instagram and Twitter. So those are the guys that come to mind. Yeah, no, we we've had a lot of fun. We had Dig Tape on uh, last year and uh, just talking to him about the game, kind of reliving like. You know, talking about older players that we all followed when we were growing up, was it was kind of cool to just yeah. take a trip down memory lane. Um, he does a great job. Um, going off of that, what is your current lacrosse stick set up in terms of shaft, head, and stringing? Right now I use – I've actually used the Evo probably my entire career. Evo 5 now. Um, with I, I don't even know the shaft. I think <laughs> I'm not too particularly on my shaft. It's just like a lightweight one. Yeah. Uh, I think it might be the Avo Pro, honestly. Um, that's my setup. My head kind of just stringing up to be a, a just a bag that has a lot of holes, not that much whip, uh, but pretty consistent so that I can feed and shoot um, from all over the field. But I'm not too particular with my stick, and it needs to be strung up in a perfect way. And then number five, uh, what has been your favorite venue to play lacrosse at? Uh, that's pretty tough, but I think uh, – Clockner is my favorite venue. Um, it's just the perfect atmosphere of the right, you know, size of the stadium for a lacrosse game. Always feels like it's packed. Um, it's loud and 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 pretty rowdy. Um, so I think you know Clockner is my favorite place to play at. Yeah, no, I think uh, every UVA guy we talked to, which it's really we're actually adding a lot of UVA guys. We talked to Coach Starja. We just recently talked to Coach Rubior, whose episode is coming out. Um, there's a, been a lot of UVA guys, and you know every single one sent Clockner, and you know I've been there a few times myself, and you know can't think of a. And I think that's a great answer for a, a venue. Um, but that wraps up our lacrosse ones. Uh, Adam, you want to take away the, the yeah. off the field? Yeah, sounds good. Um, so number one, what are some hobbies or activities you enjoy doing when you're not on the lacrosse field? You know, I like uh, probably two different types of things. Like uh, I like being outdoors. I really like surfing. Um, we head out to Long Island in the summers and then try and whenever there's waves, try and get out there as much as I can. Um, also love video games, Call of Duty right now. There we go. Um, is my favorite and, and, you know, just being able to play with, you know, all my friends from back home or from that school is just a ton of fun to keep, keep up with them. So those are the two, two biggest hobbies for me. Good stuff. Uh, number two, who's a non-lacrosse athlete you think would excel at lacrosse? Uh, I think there's a ton. Um, yeah. like, uh, you just look at some of the most athletic guys that have really good hand-eye coordination. I think they can translate really easily. So, you know, LeBron or Odell, um, mm-hmm. you know, watching the Last Dance uh, documentary, you know, imagine joining a lacrosse stick would be unstoppable. So those are some of the guys that come to mind. But, um, you know, Maybe Gronk out there yeah. as, a, as a transition mid or something, yeah. just running up and down the field. Uh, so there's a lot out there. Nice. Yeah, he just crush people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, what's your? You, you mentioned vacation a little bit. What's your favorite spot uh, to vacation? Uh, honestly, anywhere that there's a beach and warm weather. Um, you know, as long as there, it's it's nice and sunny and warm yep. water. I, you could take me anywhere. <laughs> that works. That's perfect. Uh, number four, uh, what's your favorite meal, and do you prefer to get takeout or cook at home? Oh, um, my favorite meal is probably what? Sorry. I said this is a newer one for you since you just moved home, right? You probably have yeah. you ever cooked much at UVA. No, I would never. I mean, my kitchen was never <laughs> suitable to be to be cooked in and not very clean. Um, I would say, you know, I'm a big Mexican food guy, so tacos or a burrito is my okay. favorite meal. Um, 
and I think I I think I like takeout better. Um, or or go go to a restaurant and um, you know, but that's no, no uh, bad words to my mom for her home cooking. <laughs> She's great and, and always makes the best food. But I think uh, yeah, tacos and Mexican food are my favorite. There we go. Uh, and number five, uh, what's a book or podcast uh, you've listened to or read uh, that you'd recommend to a teammate or friend? And we're adding. Since everyone's quarantined, cooped up at home and binging right now, what's the show you've been watching during quarantine? The show that I've been watching, um, there's a few. Last Dan- the Last Dance and then uh, Waco. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's about a religious cult in Texas. Uh, okay. They have a standoff with the FBI, uh, and it's just a pretty crazy story to see how it all unfolds. Mm-hmm. Um, book and podcast, I really like uh, Joe Rogan's. Um, podcasts that are like three hours long, but yeah. I just drove yeah. home from Charlottesville the other day and listened to one. Um, and he has you know comedians come on or MM, uh, MMA fighters or yeah. doctors, so that's really interesting. Nice. Um, and then book actually, uh, I'm reading it right now. Coach Tiffany gave it to everyone uh, on the team before the season got canceled. Um, it's called How Champions Think by uh, Bob Rotella, okay. who's a sports psychologist. He worked at UVA, and it's all about, you know, the mindset of the most elite elite athletes and how they're able to, you know, gain a mental advantage over uh, their uh, opponents. And so just starting that now and, and, uh, and liking it a lot. Nice. Yeah, Coach Tiffany has – doesn't he have a, you guys read a, a book, I think, each season, right? Um, he has, like, a reading list for you guys. Yeah, he always picks like one. They're not they're never like hard reads, but they're always something you can, you know, find hidden gems or, or takeaways that can be applied to on the field or just, you know, relationships with teammates or anyone off the field and, and mm-hmm. just how to better yourself, um, not only on the field but off the field. And so we've read a few books that uh, I think have really contributed to the success uh down at UVA. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, well, that wraps up our five and five. We have one final question we always like to ask our guests, and that is, what is some advice that you have for a young player looking to one day play lacrosse professionally? Uh, I think um, you can never – biggest advice is you can never uh, you can never work hard enough. Um, and working hard is cool. I think there's a lot of you – know, you know, growing up, it's – some guys, or, you know, you, you can't get the hate for, you know, being the hard out or the guy that works really hard, but you need someone like that on a team, especially as you get into high school or college that can hold people accountable. So always be working, whether that's, you know, in the gym, um, getting stronger or just having your stick, you know, with you all the time be something that will go a long way and, and that will build, you know, a hard work ethic as you continue to progress. Um, but also for younger kids, I would just say continue to play as many sports as you can. And I think lacrosse is a perfect combination of, you know, a ton of different sports of football, basketball, hockey, soccer, and they take kind of the hardest, best aspects of each one of those sports and combine it to make lacrosse. So I think, um, you know, continuing and to develop in, all, you know, three sports a year is, is something that I would, um, so, to, you know, try to continue to play as much as you can because it only helps you on the lacrosse field. No, I think that's some great advice, uh, you know, especially the, the work hard uh, aspect too because, you know, a lot of it is how much, you know, work you put in is how you get out of it. So, um, yeah, I think that's great advice, Michael. We really appreciate you coming on um, and your willingness to talk to us, and uh, we're looking forward to watching you in a Hammerheads uniform. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Today, I also want to talk to you about Phoenix Supplements. I started using Phoenix Supplements after searching for a supplement brand that didn't use any unnecessary additives. Phoenix's line of supplements use only the required ingredients and is free of any fillers that many supplement companies use. Not only that, but their supplements are produced here in the U.S. in an FDA-regulated facility, and the best part is they taste really good. I personally like using the Orange Dream School Protein Blend in the morning, and I use their Chocolate Whey following workouts. So if you're interested in trying Phoenix Supplements, visit their website, fnx 
F-I-T.com and use the code ProLacrosse to receive 15% off your order today.